Jurassic. Okay, everybody, Dr. Trill. So we're going to look at gap, gametogenesis, which is the production of a gamete, but in a female, it, it's called oogenesis, where it was, it was sper spermatogenesis in males. So oogenesis, or the production of this functional egg that can be fertilized to become a zygote. So we're going to start at the top with the oogonia, which is what I call it, or the oogonia, which is the, the, the stem cell. So notice we have mitosis, that 2N means these cells are diploid or diploid. They have two sets of chromosomes. So when they, they undergo mitosis, now we have two primary oocytes that are still diploid, so they have they have too much genetic material to be a sex cell yet. Notice that the one on the left becomes the oogonium again, so that's how, that's how stem cells work. They produce a new cell plus another stem cell, so they can constantly be churning out new cells. So now we have the primary oocyte, and this is and now this is going to undergo meiosis one, and it's going to be stopped here at prophase one. But this is really cool. All this has happened before birth. So these, uh, so the uh, the cells that are going to become the functional oocytes later in life, that happened while while a girl is in her mother's womb. The these oocytes are starting to develop. So this happens before puberty. So it's very very fascinating. I guess think about it kind of like an apple. Obviously has the seeds inside of it already, but it's just pretty cool that the next generation is already getting started while while a female is in her mother's womb. But the the downside here is this means that. A female is never genetically isolated from their offspring, and that means that if something happens, if a kid is exposed to chemicals at a very young age, it can affect their sex cells. If it's a, if it's a girl, it can affect their sex cells in ways that it really can't affect male sex cells. So you could say that a male is genetically or I isolated from their offspring until puberty, because that's when all these um, this process begins. So I, I don't know how big of a deal it is, but it's just kind of worth noting. So so all this has happened before birth. Now then then this the female is born and goes. Through life until puberty, so this is a uh, um, so then this the process is going to kick back in when when we get to puberty. But prior to this point, so when, when this female was born, she probably had one or two million of these primary oocytes. They're going to undergo a process called atresia, where many of them are just going to degrade and wear away. Maybe four hundred thousand left by the time um, this girl reaches puberty. Only going to need a few hundred of them, anyways. But that's so. There's a lot of them there. So this is all what all that's happened uh, prior to puberty. Then we have the initiation of ovulation. So the first time that the ovarian cycle works, and we have that spike in luteinizing hormone, leading to an oocyte rupturing out of or, an, or a follicle rupturing out of the ovary is going to be what triggers this for the rest of a woman's reproductive years and until until menopause. This process will occur every 28 days. We'll talk about that in more detail in a separate video. But that's this is what's going to move. So once that happens, once the girls reach puberty, now meiosis one resumes, as you can see there, and we're going to have our primary oocyte finally becoming a secondary oocyte. So that process took from when before that girl was born until that girl reached puberty, and now we have these secondary oocytes develop. So, and you see here on the left side, you have that one functional cell. On the right side, we have what are called polar bodies. So with sperm production, one primary sex cell becomes four functional sperm. In females, you only need one egg at a time, one oocyte at a time. So one primary sex cell becomes one functional oocyte or egg, and the rest can become either a single or three, up to three more polar bodies, which are degraded and, and recycled. So that's another kind of interesting tidbit. It's different in males and females. La uh, so the last thing here, uh, or the last step here, as you can also see, which is just so fascinating. So this process began before birth, and then it picked back up at puberty, but it doesn't actually finish until sperm penetrates this oocyte. So this, uh, this, uh, the cell is stuck there at metaphase two until it says before sperm penetration. So once sperm penetrates the egg, this the oocyte, the egg will finish oocyte production, and then it will, so it will complete meiosis, and for an instant, it will be the, this, this functional oocyte. But then the second that occurs, it's going to fuse with that sperm that's made it through into the oocyte, and then it's going to become a zygote. So whereas the sperm that produces an offspring has been a sperm for as long as it's been born, right, if you want to look at it that way, the oocyte has not been a fully functional oocyte until it was the moment of penetration from the sperm. So that's pretty cool. One last thing to note here that, as you can see in the bottom picture there, the sperm is really only only going to be contributing DNA. The cytoplasm is all from the egg, which means that the oocyte or the egg is going to be nourishing this, this cluster of cells until it reaches the uterus. But the other reason that's important is that the, the mom... It, it, mom's responsible for all the cytoplasm, all the cytoplasmic contents. So whereas the sperm, so dad will offer a little bit of DNA, one set of the of the two two pairs of DNA, but 
mom, mom offers all the cytoplasm contents and that includes mitochondria. And that's why all of your mitochondria come from your mother. And you can actually, you can actually look at mitochondrial DNA to make ancestral trees based on that. But it's, it all comes from the mother, at least in most cases. That is kind of interesting. All right. So that is, that is the process of oogenesis to the production of functional egg cells. So now we have functional egg, functional sperm, put them together and you have fertilization. Now we won't cover that in this unit. Pregnancy, fertilization, pregnancy and development, that's going to be covered in a unit that I'll probably make in, in quite a while. It's not actually in this course, but I've got some ideas for some videos I want to do there. But this is how we make functional eggs. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.